Well, 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 did you think that after the last book, things couldn't get any worse for the main characters? Well, you're wrong, and this book is here to prove it. Hello, fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today I have this epic, awesome, but very unfortunate book. A series of unfortunate events, book day second. The Reptile Room. Now, it is now a Netflix original series. Go check the trailers out on YouTube. I watched them and it sounded pretty good. Although, I have to say, the book is usually better than the movie. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know. And if we get right in, it's about the three Badaladare children who lost their parents in a tragic fire. Their names are Violet, Claus, and Sunny. And Sunny's only a three-year-old infant, but with very, very sharp teeth. Which comes in handy sometimes, you know, sharp teeth. You can do a lot of things like cut ropes and bite people and use it as a weapon, you know. Teeth are very hard. Sometimes some teeth are even harder than metal. That's why all um, people from medieval, I mean really old like Bronze Age people, like had these bones and they grinded it to make like swords and cool stuff like that and i mean i think that's pretty cool and if we go on to the important stuff they have been adopted by a new but distant relative who who says says that she should be called uncle monty uh, monty is a person who studies reptiles and he has a whole greenhouse like glass room full of full of reptiles in cages. Some are friendly, but some are deadly. And there they find that Uncle Monty is a very well eccentric but very kind man. He gives them each a very big room and he finds out that Claus loves reading, so he gives them a lot of books. He, she knows that Violet Badaladere loves inventing and is very good at it too. She gives her little jobs which include inventing. And for Sunny, she is given pieces of things which she could bite with. You know, infants, do, infants do, do that a lot. I mean, they can get their teeth sharpened like that, although that's what mice, mice does, and whatever. Anyway, the tragedies occur. When suddenly, Uncle Monty's old assistant is, set, is sick and has resigned. And then a new assistant comes up, but it is Count Olaf, the main villain in the first book and for the rest of the series, who is in disguise. And this book is about the Badaladare children trying to thwart Count Olaf's dastardly plot. And what? Well, you, I have to say, these Bedeladeers, they're smart. Inventing, researching, and biting kind of solves every problem, as I see it in this book. And Lemony Snicket has this really unique way of writing with bits and bits of humor. Like, for example, he talks about that um, there are places where that I am not allowed within five, five miles of your town. And he talks about how he's banned and he's been chased and and he is alive and he has been tried to be killed and he was in a jail cell or something really like crazy like that and I mean it's it's a he's a really good author and the sarcasm and the amount of humor that's inside these unfortunate events is kind of the thing that makes you go on. Also, you know you want to know what happens to the three Bedell Dare children if you know what I mean. And it is a great book, and I have to say, you got to read it. And like always, bookquester and the bookquester. Great book, guys. And, well, you got to read it. I mean, Lemony Snicket's humor, plus the super unfortunate events that only gets unfortunate, more and more unfortunate. Well, what's not to love?